assembly line for kids. Hey, kids! Have you ever thought about how things are made? All of the objects, machines, and electronic goods all around you? Well, think about it. Everything you see that isn't natural had to have been made by someone. Your bike? Your mom and dad's car? The computer or smartphone you and your family might use? It all had to be made by someone, somehow. Originally, even the simplest stuff was made by humans, using only their hands and maybe some basic tools. Imagine living a long, long time ago, when everything had to be made from scratch, by hand. The first wheel was literally chiseled out of stone or wood to make it round so it could roll. Houses were huts that were either carved or built by hand out of wood, mud, rocks, straw, hay, and other materials. Early on, wood from trees was used to make beds, desks, or tables. Can you imagine trying to build a piece of furniture like that without at least a few simple tools? As time went on, people figured out how to make and use better and more efficient tools that would allow them to build stuff more easily. Hammers, saws, chisels, pulleys, handcarts, and other devices were created so that more and more complicated things could be created with less effort. During colonial times, certain people had very specialized skills, and their jobs were to make the things the community needed. Clothing was sewn by hand, a cobbler made shoes. Farmers planted and harvested crops. Coopers made wooden tubs or kegs. Blacksmiths worked with iron. A tanner converted animal skins into leather. And basket weavers made, well, baskets. This work was arduous and took a lot of time. At some point, people started saying, there's got to be an easier way. And there was. During the Industrial Revolution, things changed. People came up with the idea of interchangeable parts, meaning that parts from one thing could be used in something else. All of a sudden, machines didn't require unique parts. They could be changed from one to another. Take your bike, for example. The seat, the wheels, the nuts and bolts. All of the things on your bicycle can be used on other bikes. And nuts and bolts from something like a bike can be used on different types of machines. This is the idea behind interchangeable parts. A caveman might say, Why didn't I think of that? The use of interchangeable parts was actually a French idea used initially to make guns. But in 1798, it came to America. Our founding father and first president, George Washington, loved the idea so much, he commissioned Eli Whitney to make guns here using interchangeable parts. Eventually, Eli took that idea and invented his famous cotton gin machine, which revolutionized the cotton industry. Interchangeable parts really put product manufacturing on a roll, leading to labor unions, changes in people's salary and the cost of making things, and adjustments to how much time people were willing to work each day. Our consumer society was really starting to grow. But nothing changed manufacturing more than what Ransom Olds developed and patented in 1901 to help him make cars. This was huge. It was called the assembly line. You may have heard of it, but what exactly is it? Well, let's say, for example, that you're put in charge of decorating the school dance, and you decide to make 100 colorful stars to hang up all over the cafeteria. You could start by drawing and cutting one star yourself, then coloring it, then sticking it to the wall, then starting on the next one. Only 99 to go. Think about how long that would take. Forever, right? A faster and easier way would be to recruit some friends and set up an assembly line so that while one person draws, one could cut, yet another person could color while a fourth could hang the stars up. That way, more stars could be made in less time. You could be drawing more and more stars 
while the rest of the process is being done by the other three people. The whole point of an assembly line is that the parts or processes for a product are completed in a sequence by individual workers. No single worker is responsible for the entire finished product. Each worker or machine does one part, and then the parts are put together to make the finished object. With this approach, the product is made much more quickly and much more efficiently, not to mention at a lower cost. When Olds tried this to make his cars in 1901, he found that production increased by 500%. That's five times the number of cars that he could then sell to customers. For the first time, someone was able to crank out brand new automobiles in large numbers. Combined with interchangeable parts, skilled workers on the assembly line became a well-oiled machine, making cars quickly and allowing them to spend less time toiling at work and more time hanging out with their families and friends. It's hard to argue with that. Between 1908 and 1915, another car maker, Henry Ford, seized on this idea and improved it. He started using a conveyor system like this. Check it out. In this system, the main part of the car, or the chassis, got towed by a rope that moved it from station to station. At each station, a worker would then add a part to the vehicle. As people at later stations were putting on parts, workers at the beginning were already starting a new one. Genius! Ford was able to crank out one car every hour and a half using this method, or a whopping two million cars a year. Back then, that was an incredible number. To this day, Ford is known as the father of the assembly line, or the father of automotive mass production. Once Ford's system was in place, things took off. Everything started being made by conveyor assemblies, including toys, radios, furniture, planes, appliances, and other consumer items. American consumerism would never be the same. These days, things have gone a step further. Assembly lines are made up of robots and machines. A person is only necessary to either oversee the whole thing or make sure the product is put together correctly at the end. The use of machines has changed everything. Manufacturers no longer need as many skilled workers to put products together. Instead, they need people who understand technology to program and troubleshoot the computers and machines that do all the heavy lifting. These computer experts have replaced the skilled workers who used to work on the assembly line. These types of assembly lines have also made the cost of making stuff cheaper so more products can be made more quickly and provided to customers at lower prices. Without the modern-day assembly line, our manufacturing economy would not last long. So, what do you think? Would you rather be a person who builds something from beginning to end, or one of the people on the assembly line who adds a part to it? Either way, there's no turning back time. Automated assembly lines are here to stay and so are the machines that operate them. Who knows? Maybe one day I won't be needed either, and this narration will be made by a machine. And it will sound like this. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. Thanks for following Clarendon Learning. Be sure to subscribe. For more free resources, check us out at clarendonlearning.org.